Hi y'all, welcome back to the garden. It's early this morning and I didn't shoot the video yesterday afternoon because I was just beat, uh, but the Limelight Prime Hydrangea Hedge is in, which is super exciting. Um, I was gonna save that project a little bit later, but it's been a cool weekend even this morning right now. It's only about 40 degrees. So I wanted to come out here and shoot this before it gets much warmer. I don't think it's gonna get super hot today, but I'm gonna try and work on some irrigation uh, and get that project rolling too. I like to get all those heavy, difficult projects done before we get too much heat. Also, my perennials and roses are arriving this week and I am getting like 600 perennials arriving and then uh, all of the roses, I think there's 24 or 26, something around in there. And so those things will have to be planted too. But I'm gonna take you along and show you what I did. I did capture some footage. Uh, I didn't record the entire process, even though it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Uh, and then I'm just going to give you some helpful hints that if you want to plant a hedge of anything, uh, some things you should consider, because I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram about the hedge of uh, incredible hydrangeas I had at the last home. So let's get started. So first, I'm just going to show you the hedge, uh, and I may do some video of me planting them yesterday and some voiceover work. So there's a total of 36 hydrangeas in this area. And of course, I still need to come through and do the bed edge. Um, after I got these in, this is be the perfect opportunity over the next couple weeks to come through and establish an edge. And so I'll probably start around here and clip off all of this grass and clean it up. But I started a little bit to the left. I probably could have put another hydrangea here on the end. Uh, but the reason I didn't is because these will eventually get pretty wide and I didn't want to impede access to the gates. So also yesterday I went ahead and ran drip irrigation. Those are two gallon per hour emitters down there. And I did two per hydrangea. You could also use the irrigation tubing that has emitter spaced every 12, 18 inches if you want to. I wanted to focus solely on watering the hydrangeas and nothing else in this bed to inhibit weed growth. And so I'm not supplying excess water where it's not needed. Hydrangeas specifically are shallow rooted, um, so most of their roots are going to be at the surface of the plant, and um, that means closer to the crown of the plant as well. So they'll spread out eventually, and you could pop additional emitters in there as they get a little older, but for now this is going to take them along for a good number of years. You can see here how far we have from this gate. Starts right here, and we got about the same distance here, if not a little less, because this bed is going to swoop in a little skinnier on this end, so I have enough room to get in and out of the gate easily. All right, before we get into tips and tricks for general hedge planting, I want to talk to you about why I chose Limelight Prime Hydrangea. Limelight Prime is an improvement over Limelight, which is the granddaddy of paniculatas that has been on the market for over 20 years at this point. Uh, Limelight Prime is a little smaller, four to six foot tall and wide, so it would look better against the fence, but also the main reason is stem hardiness. If you're familiar with Limelight, you know I had them at the last home in tree form uh, around the patio, and I also had a standalone one next to an arch that I had. The stems, after they bloom, Although they can be pretty thick, they are not super sturdy. So that leads to when you have heavy rains, the blooms falling pretty bad. Uh, snow load in winter is difficult and can cause damage as the branches break off and become brittle in the cold. And I grew two Limelight Prime at the last house and even as tiny, tiny shrubs. I purchased them as a one gallon. The fall they were re released to, a public, to the public in a limited edition from Proven Winners website. And I was able to grab two of those, uh, kept them in a container one year, grew them on before I planted them in the garden the next year. And so I think I had them a total of three years in the garden. Uh, and even as tiny shrubs, they had really strong stems. So I wanted to not have to be dealing with flopping blooms. 
So Limelight Prime has really big blooms, just like Limelight. All the benefits of all the hydrangeas that are usually there for paniculatas are there. Turns pink potentially a little sooner than Limelight. Holds pink color a little better maybe than Limelight in some conditions, depending on where you are at in the United States. Paniculata hydrangeas in the north tend to turn pink. In the south, they can transition directly to brown as they dry. Uh, just because of the heat and humidity. Here we do get some pinkness. I don't know that I'll get any pinkness the first couple of years. Anytime you plant a hydrangea, it may take a couple years before you start seeing um, the blooms not burn. And of course you need to give them plenty of water, which is why I installed drip irrigation. Now let's talk about uh, designing a hedge in general. Like I mentioned, I've been getting several questions. It's been an unusual number of them the past just week about the hydrangea hedge I had at the last garden on Instagram and some videos. I guess people are getting in the planting mode and wanting to do some designing themselves. Uh, at that garden, I don't remember how far I spaced apart those incredibles because I had an emerald green arborvitae in between them, probably somewhere between four and five feet at a diagonal because the Incredibles were spaced forward a little bit. So the first thing you're gonna need when designing a hedge is a tape measure. I have a little one here and I did not use it yesterday. If you are planting a long hedge of something, I would recommend you cut off a board or a short piece of trim like I have here. I've actually got written on it, Limelight Prime Hydrangea Hedge. 40 inches, and that's how far apart I space my hydrangeas, and also how far from the fence I space them. 40 inches may seem a little arbitrary, and it kind of is. It was based on how many hydrangeas. This right here behind me is also a hedge of Limelight Prime hydrangeas, and I had eight of them last year, and I spaced them 40 inches apart. So I carried that over to the other side as well. So 40 inches, um, what you want to do is plant the plants on center. So like I said, when hydrangeas, these say they get four to six foot tall and wide, um, that is also usually listed on the plant tag as a size it can be maintained at. If left unpruned, uh, these hydrangeas will get much larger than that, and plants never stop growing. Uh, the plant tags are very helpful to give you an idea, like I said, that they can be maintained at, but like evergreens, they don't stop growing. They may slow down, uh, along with other plants. They may slow down to only a couple inches a year, but they're still going to be growing, and those couple inches over 10 years can end up almost to two foot. So planting spacing is really important. So I took four to six foot tall and wide. Uh, if you divide six foot by two, you get 36 inches. And I went a little further than that uh, because these are gonna be a little taller, I think, and we'll leave them so they grow a little taller than maybe even the fence or the height of the fence, which is five foot here. And then you plant them on center, which is the center of the bucket where the stem is. So mine are 40 inches from stem to stem. Um, that is not side of bucket to side of bucket because that could also vary too. In my case, I was really lucky to be able to find five gallon limelight primes from Browns. Uh, it's not often you find hydrangeas that are not ball and burlap that are bigger than three gallon here. So I'm starting out with some bigger plants to begin with, which is also a great tip if you're gonna be doing a hedge. Planting small things uh, because it's cost efficient is great, but if you want impactful plantings quickly, uh, you need to just go ahead and spend the money, if you have it, on bigger plants to begin with. So I chose the five gallon limelight primes, spaced them every 40 inches, a total of 36, and that means they will overlap, their bloom canopy will overlap, creating a continuous hedge. Maybe you don't want them to overlap, in that case you space them further apart. Uh, if you want them just to touch, you might want to space them. Uh, five foot apart and that means they might just barely touch because they get four to six foot tall and wide They can probably be pruned where they'll just barely touch It really depends but some things that you want to take into consideration is also whether the plant you're planting has considerable disease issues some plants need sufficient airflow hydrangea paniculata doesn't necessarily have any issues that I've noticed being planted closely together with foliar issues or bloom issues. Uh, hydrangea macrophylla sometimes needs sufficient airflow or they could get diseases. So you might not wanna plant them as closely. You might wanna just do groupings of them. 
or a hedge that is also a hedge, but it doesn't touch, so there's sufficient airflow. So take considerations into the plant characteristics that you're also purchasing as to whether they should even be planted as a hedge. Evergreens, if you hedge them, that means that the parts of them that are not going to get light are probably going to die. So in the event you lose an evergreen in your hedge, the sides of the ones that are next to it may not have any foliage on them, and then you have an issue where they look bad as well. Along the lines of selecting plants at the garden center, uh, oftentimes plants are planted very quickly or uh, potted very quickly. So try and select plants that are centered in the container. A lot of the limelight prime hydrangeas that I had were slightly off center uh, a little bit. And so I would have to adjust the hole manually when I was digging it. And I would typically turn them so they were off center towards the front. So it might be a little further away from the fence, but they won't be different left to right. Because if there's anything that drives me insane uh, over the next couple years is a plant that's not evenly spaced. I did this at my last garden with a boxwood and it drove me nuts for years thinking maybe I should just dig that up and fix it. Of course, it would have been a pain to do. So get it right the first time. And even if it requires you to do a little more digging, um, make sure that you get it evenly spaced for how the shrub will look when it's fully designed into a hedge. Consider doing drip irrigation on your hedge. Uh, when it starts growing up, it may be difficult to water around the plants. You know, I do drip irrigation everywhere. In this case, I typically run the drip irrigation behind the shrub. Uh, but in this case here, consider the slope of the landscaping. Here, the landscape slides down. That means the water is going to transfer down into the ground and behind the shrub. So I place the irrigation on the front of the shrub so the root ball could get the water as it falls to lower ground. One of the primary things to also consider is the depth of your bed. So if you're planting shrubs that get 10 foot tall and 10 foot wide, you can't put them in a bed that is only six foot deep. You need a bed that's maybe 12 foot deep. If you're planting along the house, consider which side of the house you're planting. If it's the north side, understand those plants aren't gonna get a whole lot of light. In my case, I planted my Incrediballs on the north. They got a little sun in the afternoon, so west facing, it was kind of north, northwest. Uh, the Incrediballs stretched a little bit. I should have planted them a little closer to the house because they leaned out a little bit and then left kind of some gap behind. Uh, you, of course, don't want to be planting things so they end up touching your house, so sizing is really important there as well. If you're planting a mixed shrub border or an alternating shrub border like I had at the last house with the Incrediballs and the Emerald Green, you need to take into account both sizes of those, uh, sizes of those plants when fully grown when spacing them so they're not going to be impeding each other's growth. But also consider if you're planting a hedge of anything, consider what the area would look like if you lost one of them. I planted 36 limelight prime hydrangeas. I've never really lost a hydrangea if it's on drip irrigation and well taken care of. The only time I've lost a hydrangea was around the patio when it was holding too much water in the root system, just could not breathe. The plant struggled and it died. But if you lose one of your evergreens in your planting, consider how that's going to look when you have to replace it. Maybe you don't want to do a hedge after all because evergreens grow somewhat slower and Maybe you'll have a gap or you'll have one that's shorter than the other, other ones if you have to replace it. So a hedge isn't for everyone. Maintenance of a hedge can also be sometimes difficult. Uh, here it's going to be probably kind of time consuming to prune these every year. So eventually I may get to a point where I'm just using a hedge shear like I did at the last house for my bobos. Because bobos have so many stems it's kind of difficult to prune those. But limelights, uh, the bigger pediculatas, don't have as many stems so it might be easier to do. Either way, take into consideration all of those things when you're designing a hedge, because maybe you decide after all, you want to make a smaller hedge, or maybe you don't want to make a hedge at all, and you want to do a mixed planting of shrubs. So in the future, I'm hoping this year it will be really beautiful, but for me, in the coming years, these will grow together nicely. And I may have a short area on the end that's not quite filled in this year that I can plant some annuals or some other things in. There's still going to be some digging in this area. I've got to get uh, some irrigation through this little gate up into the backside pool area. But you can see here how nicely spaced these are apart and we'll walk to the backside so you can see how even they are along the fence here. So they just kind of slope nicely all the way down. 
Some of them, like I mentioned, are a little bushier than others, which is fine. This first year, um, I will keep them well watered. Now that they're on drip irrigation, I actually ran the drip irrigation for an hour yesterday and hand watered them in really nicely so they would have a nice start off. It's been, it was only 50, high 50s, low 60s yesterday. So they got, it was a great planting day with cool temperatures and we'll continue to keep these babied for a little bit until they look really nice. Next steps for me today are going to get uh, things running for the drip irrigation. I'm going to try and convert my edger over into the little trenching attachment and at least get uh, the hole dug for the line so I can get the line placed and then I'll have to dig uh, bigger holes for the valves which may take some time and I may have to run get some extra pieces this week to complete those but if I get the trench done today I'll be able to move forward doing um, the small stuff after work because that will not take quite as long as it is going to to get the trench done. Thank you guys for joining me this morning uh, as I talk to you about planting hedges of things not necessarily hydrangeas. Uh, I hope you found this information useful and I hope your gardening season is warming up where you are. It's cooled off a little bit here, uh, but that, as I expected, it might uh, before we reach our last frost date. We might get a frost tomorrow, so if you're local, consider if you put anything out to cover it uh, so it is protected. Thanks for joining me this morning, guys. And remember, be a light. Take care. Bye.